You said that you wanted this end to the saga to be yeah. ambitious mm. with your character. Yes. What does that mean, and do you think this movie pulls that off? I meant that I wanted it to be character-driven, and I wanted us uh, to confront the question of age uh, straight on, not to, f you know, not to, t to hide my age, but to take advantage of it in the telling of the story. And do you think the movie pulls that off, that what you would hope for? I, I feel very strongly that it does. One thing that I loved about the movie, among many things, is the fact that there were inside jokes for those of us who have followed you and followed Indy since Raiders of the Lost Ark in 1981. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to show a scene from 81, you then and you now. Here, take a look. Get back. The lesson seems to be never bring a sword or a whip to a gunfight. To a gunfight, yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> that guy, the, the, the swordsman. Right. In the original Raiders. In the original Raiders had worked for months to perfect his skills with the scimitar. Right. And we were to have filmed a four-day uh, whip and scimitar fight in a, in a marketplace. And I was suffering from uh, um, dysentery. And uh, so were many members of the crew. Not Stephen, because he, every time he went in the shower, he put gaffer tape over his mouth. <laughs> Stephen and, and traveled with, with a trunk full of SpaghettiOs. <laughs> But he didn't have dysentery. But he didn't have dysentery. <laughs> so it was up to me to say, listen, I can't stay out of the dressing room for very long. Should we think about cutting this down? Let's just shoot this son of a bitch. <laughs> and Stephen said, I was just thinking about that myself. <laughs> and it worked like gangbusters. And we did, yeah. But it was a terrible disappointment to the poor guy that had been working all this time to perfect well, his Well, I hope skills. they paid him for the five days. I'm sure they did, yeah. Uh, you have said that playing Indy was, is a joy and has been a joy for yes, you. It has. Why, and is it a little bit bittersweet to have to say goodbye to him? Uh, no, no, it's a time for me to grow up. <laughs> uh, six years ago, I... I I thought maybe we ought to take a shot at, at uh, making another one. And I wanted it to be about age because I think that rounds out the story mm -hmm. that we've told. And speaking to this issue of age, not making jokes about it, but, but making it a real thing. I am also a, a big fan of 1923, the prequel to Yellowstone, where yeah. you play Jacob Dutton who's trying to hold on to his ranch against the ravages and threats from progress. Mm -hmm. Take a look. They're blasting a mine right above this ranch's main water supply. They own the property to the north now and to the south. To squeeze what's in the middle. And what's in the middle is us. Justice would be a luxury. My concern is survival. Do you ever feel that way in real life as your work goes from movies to streaming and we face a world of artificial intelligence? Are you the kind of person who embraces change or kind of holds it at a distance? I mean, when it's helpful, I'm happy to have it. And when it's, uh, uh, when it's not, um, I'm disappointed that we've chosen to use it. Are there instances that you think? It's... I think it's not a question of the technology, it's how you use it. I mean, we have the capacity to generate more enemies than anyone would ever face before. More airplanes in the sky than anyone would ever see. But what happens is you lose human scale. And if you lose that, you lose the ability, the, the audience's ability 
to, to, to experience it consistent with the characters, the story that you're telling. And, and that's, that's, it's almost, um, it's, it's too easy. Speaking of technology, I, I don't want to give away too much of Indy 5, but the movie begins in the, well, towards the end of World War II. You're mm -hmm. back fighting the Nazis as you were in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And through some technological wizardry, 80-year-old Harrison Ford looks exactly like 40-year-old Harrison Ford. Do you understand how they did that? Not completely. <laughs> <laughs> but it is 40 years year old Harrison Ford, and that's why it looks so good. Lucasfilm, I've been working for Lucasfilm most of my adult life. Every frame of film, that, those that are used in the, in, the, in the films that we made together, and those that are not, all, all, every frame of film could be mined with, here, here we go again, artificial intelligence, and they could find the right angle, the right light, so that's my mouth, my eyes, my face, married. And, it, and, it's, and it's, it's not photoshopped or anything. It doesn't look that way. No, it's it, real. I literally am thinking to myself as I'm watching it, did he shoot parts of Indiana <laughs> Jones 5 back when he was doing Raiders of the Lost Ark? Because it really was seamless. It was beautiful, yeah. You've made more than 70 films, which have grossed more than $9 billion. And obviously the movies were great, but do you, have any, do you have any thoughts about why it is that for so many years, so many people have wanted to sit in the dark and watch you? They're not watching me. They're watching a movie in which I play various characters. I think that because I was 35, 40 years old, at really the height of, of Hollywood's influence over the culture and vice versa, we, we were enjoying a, a very uh, good time to be in the movie business. Well, I have another theory about this that I want to uh, test with you. I think your secret sauce, Harrison Ford, is your vulnerability. And I want to explore this a little bit with you. Uh, here's a scene of you as Jack Ryan in, in the middle of an ambush by the drug cartel in clear and present danger. I think you look as scared and shaken as we think we would if, God forbid, we should ever be in that situation. I have always, uh, I've been accused of playing heroes. I don't play heroes. I play a CIA man or a, or a doctor or, or whatever it is. But you cannot play a hero. You have to play your audience. You have to bring your audience into that moment. And what are, what, are, what and, and you want them to feel emotionally consistent with the characters because it's then, then we're not talking about the story. The audience is immersed in the story. It's, it, it, it's a whole different thing. 